Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Commodity TV in a new edition of our online interview series. Today we want to talk with Uranium Energy and of course Amir Adnani, the founder and CEO is here with us because Uranium is hot, I would say. Amir, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> I've got a hot, I have a hot drink to go with hot Uranium. <laughs> I hope it's not Uranium inside the cup. <laughs> Just a little, just a little bit of coffee. That, super. Yeah, that I mean, powers you, me up. Yeah, uranium looks super. Fifty-eight dollars per pound to me in the chart. That's a real breakout. I'm a shareholder in your company, of course. And uh, yeah, it's it's it is really crazy what is going on. Somebody tried uh, to short your stock, and I think uh, that looks more like kamikaze, isn't it? Well, I think at the end of the day, we had a period um, starting, let's say, around. Uh, spring of this year, around March, where there was generally a lot of uncertainty and unease in the broader markets. In the United States, we had the regional bank failures that really spooked the market. And overall, there was uh, broad concerns about uh, earnings season, what companies' earnings were going to be. There's concerns about uh, geopolitical issues in the world. And all of that really weighed on the markets broadly and, frankly, really weighed on the equities in the uranium sector as well. One thing that uh, was fascinating is during the period where copper broke down, lithium broke down, oil broke down, gold broke down, mm -hmm. the uranium price didn't break down. Not the equities, the physical itself remained unchanged at around $50 per pound. Mm -hmm. And that was quite interesting. It really spoke to the tightness in the market and the fundamentals that are shaping up in the uranium industry where we have growing demand and simply a supply deficit. Then, as to your point, in the last few weeks, we've seen this uh, incredible momentum and surge of interest come in in a more aggressive way, and price has gone from $50 to $58 per pound. The equities are following right behind that, but it also helps that the broader market has calmed down a bit. The U.S. debt ceiling issue is behind us. Uh, the uh, S&P has put in a good run here. Of course, we've got the Fed uh, as well that we got to kind of look out for. But all of a sudden, the equities are rallying and you see from the lows recently of $2.50 is now trading above, you know, $3 and, you know, close to $3.20, etc. So it's made a good run, but still has ways to go because the equities are really trying to play catch up to the physical uh, and um, if you consider the, where the physical is, not only is it breaking out, it's basically near a two-year high, mm -hmm. but the equities are not near a two-year high. They're mm -hmm. still 50, 60, 70 percent away from their two-year highs. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And I looked it up at shortsqueeze.com. There are still 44.3 million shares short in UEC. Honestly, I don't get that because to my understanding, you are heavily undervalued. I think at the end of the day, <clears throat> UEC, when you look at UEC and you look at other widely held uh, uranium stocks out there that are especially US listed like we are, we have the same uh, level of short interest as, uh, as US peers. Uh, in the US, we get a lot of indexing and indexes are passive investors. Uh, we are, for example, in the Russell Index, we are in a number of uranium ETFs and non-uranium ETFs. These indexes do lend out their stock or holdings as borrow. Uh, and that means that if you're very widely held and very liquid, uh, it's easier if someone wants to express a short position either on the sector or the company or as a pair trade, it's easier to go to a more uh, liquid name. Uh, UEC's liquidity is very impressive. UEC is the second most liquid uranium stock mm -hmm. in terms of dollar volume and volume traded on a daily basis, second after chemical. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, this is really good on the, uh, when, the mar when the market turns, when the market's not doing well, like it hasn't been the last few months. Uh, it can be a, a problem if you're very liquid because it's where people will take liquidity out of first, is where short interest can come in. Mm -hmm. But when the sector turns and clearly has momentum, and trust me, I, I really believe over 90% of the investment world, maybe even higher than that, doesn't have any uranium exposure yet. 
The world's biggest mining funds don't have uranium exposure yet. This sector is very much under owned mm -hmm. and funds are very much underweight when it comes to uranium. So when that changes and when larger funds and investors, broadly speaking, decide to get into uranium, not only does UEC's US listing and very uh, strong liquidity and turnover make it easier to own the company, but the quality of the company's assets, the quality of the assets that we've acquired, not only in the last 16 months, as you know, we've been the most aggressive company growing in the uranium sector with $600 million of acquisitions. Mm. That's $600 million more than the next company that hasn't even done a dollar of m and The quality of the projects, the location of the projects in North America at a time of geopolitical risk and our production readiness in the U.S. having fully permitted assets and infrastructure. These are the attributes combined with strong liquidity that will make a great setup. And hey, if you have a bit of a short position on the way up, that's great because then the shorts need to cover as well. Yep. And that creates even more of a strong Pressure. setup for a, a, a push. And yeah, and that's, that's why people love UEC and that's why UEC is such a go-to name in the sector. Yeah, that's why I'm also heavily invested, of course. Um, yeah, you named it already, production readiness. I mean, you have the Wyoming hub and spoke ISR portfolio. You have the Texas hub and spoke ISR portfolio. So I, I remember, it's like I think it was like two years ago, we were talking about, hey, when is when might UEC start production? And I remember you saying, I hope that I'm correct, yeah, something like $60, $65 over three months is at least, and then we probably might restart. So how likely is it? Because my feeling is the $60, $65 might be reached within the next three to six months. We could be at $65 a pound next week. I mean, this market could all of a sudden move mm -hmm. in a way that uh, will, uh, you know, clear new levels and, um, you know, be on our way towards $100 a pound. Uh, we remain uh, very much in a position to uh, lead U.S. production higher, the Uranium One assets that we acquired in Wyoming. We recently had a site visit for institutional investors and analysts that um, really the key takeaway from that site visit for everyone was really being impressed at how production ready UEC is. Mm -hmm. These are past producing assets that we own, both in Wyoming and Texas. Uh, these are institute recovery projects, which have a great and very strong ability uh, to come into production without significant capex. In fact, we don't have any capital requirements for the restart because the projects, again, are built and permitted and ready to go. Our team is currently testing and making sure that all you know every aspect of production restart is being tested uh, and that we're de-risking the production restart from making sure that Pumps are working, electricals are working, valves are working, flow rates for the solution that's going to be going into the field, etc. All of that. Our irrigatory processing plant is uh, fully operational. Staff and team that we have on hand and people that we're hiring additionally, all that work is happening right now. So even though we're not in that 60-65 range that we want to see to restart, even though we're not there, we're close enough that we have the confidence to invest in making sure we're ready. And when we see the price stabilize in that 60, 65 range, we will be able to go back into initial production. And from there, we would ramp that production up in the coming years. We have a license capacity uh, in Wyoming of 2 million pounds at Erigiri, 2 million pounds at Reno Creek. We have a license capacity, 4 million pounds at Hobson. This is a company that has combined 8 million, over 8 million pounds of a license capacity in the United States at a time where the U.S. is not producing any uranium and is the world's largest uranium consumer. So mm. to own UEC today is fascinating because you own probably the only company on the planet that can be in production as fast as we can be uh, with the shortest lead time on fully built assets, but in the best jurisdictions and the jurisdiction, the U.S. that needs uranium badly more than anywhere else. That setup, no other company offers. And the entry point in terms of where the valuation is on a price to NAV, UEC is the cheapest uranium stock on the planet today, especially for a company that has the 
again, the high quality of asset base and the location that we have. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, the opportunity right now that is very exciting and we'll be getting on the road very soon here and doing even more uh, broader marketing to tell our story and explain mm -hmm. kind of where we are and what we've accomplished not only in the last 15 months, but what we've accomplished in the last 18 years. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a company that has been in production. We produced uranium. We have that uh, history. We have that know-how. We have that credibility. And we have done more M&A to grow our total business and resource than any other uranium company over the last not only 15 months, but decade. And this is what's going to make the difference when we get into a hundred dollar a pound uranium environment. And we are going to a hundred dollars a pound uranium. That is what when That's this is sure. true bull market. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I see also one really major advantage with your company, and that's one of the reasons why I have also invested, is because you are located with two production sites then in the US. And I think the US want to have more <coughs> uranium production inside the US, and especially with the situation with Russia. Um, I think uh, the supply coming out of the US, it will be something which they maybe will support heavily in the short term. It is the most interesting market and now one of the uh, fast growing markets in the US is uh, really due to these advanced and small modular reactors that are being built. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to always be that the growth was always in China and there is growth in China that hasn't changed. But the US has gone from being a flatlining story to all of a sudden nuclear generating capacity is expected to double in the next 20 year story. And the companies that are entering the arena to build and expand US nuclear capacity are companies like Terra Power, that is, uh, was started by Bill Gates, is funded by Bill Gates and the US mm -hmm. Department of Energy. Dow Chemical, that's announced their recent plans to build small modular reactors in Texas. There is a whole set of players, industrial players, billionaires, energy companies, that are different than the companies that own the existing reactor fleet, which are utility companies. So a whole new set of players that are entering the US market, mm -hmm. wanting to build uh, advanced and small modular reactors that's gonna double demand in the US alone, and US supply is zero. On top of that, the US government is entering the arena with their plans to expand and grow the strategic uranium reserve which is going to be a $1.5 billion uranium program over the next decade. So you've got the government buying, you've got billionaires and energy companies and chemical companies coming in to build SMRs. And then you've got the existing fleet that powers one in every five home that needs uranium as well. Nuclear power and nuclear energy in the U.S. is arguably the best situation right now because again there's so much such a dynamic environment there's so much growth there's such a large fleet and it's uh, also got the attention of the white house it's got the attention of washington in a very bipartisan way and that is a setup Johan, that in my 18 years i've never seen and as you know some of my colleagues like scott melby who's been in this for 40 years they've never seen a setup like this before the most yeah fundamentally positive setup mm -hmm. for the U.S. market. Of course, this is a totally yeah. global business. But if you got uranium assets in the United States at this moment in time with all the points that I just mentioned, this is the right setup. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, maybe one question and maybe you can answer that short. Um, I understand in your presentation when you are going with both projects uh, in production, then I mean in Texas and Wyoming, you can do roughly four and a half million pounds per year as a capacity. How long would it take to ramp that up to full capacity? It's going to take us a, a few years to ramp up overall, because as we ramp up, we're going to be hiring people. We're going to be looking at the uranium market. We're going to be uh, increasing our uh, resources. So ultimately, Uh, we would look at a ramp-up period that would really start in year one and every year for the next three to five years from initial, initial commencement, mm -hmm. we would be looking at increasing annual production. And we can do that in Texas and we can do that in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And then we would plan to bring in Saskatchewan projects eventually in five to six years as well 
So we would really look to be producing from Texas, Wyoming, and Saskatchewan, and it would be a gradual ramp up from now to the next uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, over the coming years. Yeah, okay. I, I get often the question, what are you doing with your titanium project? Because it still sits there and it, it, uh, it is valued at zero. That's uh, what, I, what my feeling is, yeah? We should have we should have um, we should have news on that soon. We were uh, mm -hmm. I think I mentioned to you before wanted to really complete a very thorough and thoughtful uh, review and also uh, economic study on that uh, that fits into the current market conditions for titanium. Mm -hmm. We are almost there with uh, completing and releasing that, and I think it will demonstrate that Alto Parana truly is based on. The information that we've uh, provided so far, uh, which is our uh, resource estimate on that project, mm -hmm. this is truly a very large, um, very very much a world class mm -hmm. project. Of course, not a core focus for UEC because we're core focuses on uranium. Uh, however, it was a great opportunistic pickup. We will figure out the best way to monetize it, and um, we will have more information on that soon. Okay, super. Last question: What is uh, what are the next steps on the Rough Rider project? Because I think you made a really unbelievable bargain with that, and there were hundreds of uh, millions already invested. And I think uh, at that time, when Rio Tinto bought it, was over like what was it like six hundred million, something like that, and you bought it for what one hundred twenty million? Yeah, that's right. So when you think about the Rough Rider, uh, Rio. Uh, Tinto uh, outbid Cameco and paid 600 million to acquire Rough Rider, then spent 100 million on mine development. And then Rio Tinto got so big while the uranium market was going down before this turnaround that we've seen in the last few years that Rio got so big in iron ore and lithium and other commodities. Mm -hmm. Frankly, uh, the uranium opportunity was uh, just not big enough for Rio at this point. Uh, so we got a heck of a deal acquiring Rough Rider for $150 million, almost equal to the replacement value of all the drilling, all the engineering and, uh, and development work that they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have immediately announced development plans ourselves. We had a press release recently that uh, talked about the uh, variety of work tracks that we've commenced uh, from uh, baseline uh, sampling to a PEA, uh, economic assessment that we'll put out. Uh, we've hired another firm to analyze and look at the best ways to uh, develop a milling strategy around the project. So we're pushing it very aggressively, built a team around advancing Rough Rider. This is truly a world-class project that UEC now owns with grades upwards of 3 to 5% grade uranium on the east side of Athabasca, near power, near airport, near infrastructure, uh, construction facilities, mills. It is... Uh, uh, really a, an ideally situated project and has uh, just a wealth of information around it with the past work that was done by Rio Tinto. So mm -hmm. when you think about Rough Rider in the context of the company's portfolio, the company today, UEC, controls uh, almost 328 million pounds of uranium resources across U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. that, that is uh, the largest diversified portfolio of any company in North America. Mm -hmm. And really combining what we think is best in class, low cost institute recovery in the U.S. on fully built production restart projects with infrastructure and licenses in place, combining that best in class in the U.S. with best in class in Canada, which is high grade conventional. And in conventional mining where grade is king, there, there isn't a place as high grade as Athabasca anywhere in the world. These are the highest grade deposits, and that's where you want to be. And that's where UEC now has not just Rough Rider, but over 20 uranium projects, including joint ventures with Cameco and Orano. So again, we've built a we've built a significant portfolio here of both Canadian Athabasca projects and U.S. production restart uh, mm -hmm. platforms. Super. It was a great final sentence. Amir, thank you very much uh, for yeah the super insights. And uh, as said, we are really uranium bulls. $100 per pound is for sure. Hopefully, well, maybe this year, I don't know. But for next year, I think it's for sure. And uh, yeah, I think uh, UEC is an outstanding investment opportunity, especially now at those prices and everything looks good. 
Thank you very much. Wish you all the best and I have a good feeling that we talk quite soon. Thank you, Jochen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Amir Nani, the CEO and founder of UEC, Uranium Energy Corporation. You heard it. The company is in a fantastic shape, super well diversified, the best diversified uranium portfolio of all companies and over 320 million pounds of uranium they are owning. They also have physical stuff. They have a lot of cash in the bank and they are doing extremely well. If you want to ride a uranium bull, you should really own UEC. I do so, hopefully you soon. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.